Hey guys, so it has been a couple of days. I know I've been trying to do the heart failure updates every two to three days, but I had a rough end of the week last week. So I'm going to explain to you guys what happened. Um, so basically, I think I talked to you guys the last time and said that I visited my new primary, which I was very excited with at the time. It seemed like she had kind of a good grasp on the situation. Um, she has a background in cardiac care. She is a nurse practitioner. Um, and I had heard really good things about her. And Thursday, I left there very excited. She had cut two of my meds in half, but said to keep an eye on my blood pressure. Then the following day, Friday, I went to the heart failure clinic. I don't like to call it that. I even told them, I said, you know, listen, uh, when you walk in the door, you don't want to hear anything about heart failure. You want to hear heart success. So I was like, maybe I should consider possibly renaming it because uh, it's a terrible, just a bad vibe. Anyway, they said they would take it into consideration. But, you know, I had told you guys previously that they weren't going to let me film in there. And they actually said, the, their media people said to tell us thank you for the idea because they were going to pursue it. But we managed to get a clip. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and insert the, the quick video that we took there just so you guys can see what it looks like. And honestly, pretty much the same as every doctor's office except one minor detail. I love that the tables that you have to get up on, you can literally just sit right down. Like you don't have to climb up on the table. Trust me, it makes a big difference when you have heart failure because your heart has to work so hard to do any kind of climbing. Um, in the video, you'll see me filling out a little quiz that they had there for us. Um, it was just basic knowledge about, you know, what you know about heart failure. So I aced it, of course. Y'all know. Do my research. I'm a Google doctor now. Like, I got my doctorate literally from Google. And we didn't hesitate to tell them that. Like, I'm now a Google doctor specializing in heart failure. A cardiologist from Google. So... Yeah, no, I don't know. But I have been doing extensive research about it. Uh, and the good news is most of the time, what I've been reading is that it is pretty close to like 90% curable. So that's a good thing. I'm sorry. Our animals are just like off the chain. It's getting ready to storm. So you're going to hear a bird and two dogs possibly. I doubt that you'll hear a cactus. He's in the back here. He's our... He's our ball python. Um, and then I doubt you'll hear Zena because she's on the other side of the house right now. So you will hear some parrots. You will hear some dogs. Sorry about that. Or maybe you like it. Maybe that's a, one of the things that you look forward to with our videos. I don't know. Uh, so the heart failure clinic actually ended up taking me off of another one of my medications. They're still saying that I'm going to have to stay on the meds for like a year. And guys, when I tell you I'm on a lot of meds, listen... I know sometimes I tend to exaggerate, okay, but I don't think this is an exaggeration. This is ridiculous. Like, so much so, they had to give me this to keep track of my meds. This is crazy. Like, what? So, uh, luckily right now, I'm only taking things in the morning and in the evening. Now, rewind real quick. The new doctor that I had this past Thursday cut two of my meds in half, okay? And then when I went to the heart failure clinic, they completely took me off of another medication. Now, the reason they did that was because, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but I have been breaking out like all over. Um, and you can even see like my face is a little bit red still. Got hives like all over. Anyway, it's been really difficult to get to sleep because just like you ever get that feeling like your skin is crawling? That's what I've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks. And it's just been not fun because it's just so irritating and it makes you very short fused. Like every little thing just gets to you. So because they had cut down so much on my medications, like they really made quite a few adjustments in such a short period of time. 
I thought it would be a good idea to keep on top of my blood pressure. So I've been doing, um, I, I don't know if I would call it excessive, but I checked my blood pressure several times per day just to see where we were at because it was yo-yoing up and down, up and down. Like when I went to the doctor on this past Thursday, it was like 90 over 60, which is like, you know, do you even have a blood pressure? And then since I got cut back with my meds, it's been, you know, yo-yoing back and forth between that and high blood pressure. Like for instance, over the weekend, it was like 160 over 90 something. And you know, that obviously is higher um, than I want. I believe in being proactive with my medical, with everything really. And you know, I just felt like I was being vigilant. But when I went back to the doctor on Monday, which was supposedly just for a quick blood pressure check, I was a little irritated, not a little, I was a lot irritated for a couple reasons. Number one, like she basically reprimanded me for checking my blood pressure more than once a day. Nobody ever said check it once a day. You know, as far as I was concerned, I was gonna keep checking it because I don't wanna get myself in an emergency situation. So, you know, she's like, you're gonna get yourself upset and you're gonna make your condition worse and you're gonna cause other problems. And I'm like, you know, it's not like I'm planning to check it several times a day, every day. Like this was just because it was the weekend and my meds were just adjusted like by a lot. You know what I mean? Like, don't be a jerk. The other thing that I was irritated about was on Thursday, they wanted to draw some blood and I was like, oh, what are you drawing it for? And I was assured that it was just like a, you know, CBC, like to check my blood counts, whatever. And on that note, my white blood cells actually were still elevated. So I have to go back, I had to go back on an antibiotic, which is whatever. Um, I was hoping that all the IV antibiotics that I was on in the hospital would have gotten the infection, but like, now I gotta go back on antibiotics, very strong antibiotics for 10 days. So whatever, you know, that's fine. However, the thing that I was irritated about was that they also checked my A1C, which, you know, if anybody knows, that has to do with diabetes. And when I was in the hospital, they checked my A1C. I guess it's protocol, I don't know. And they kept trying to push me to go on, you know, insulin, whatever. I'm like, no, I wanna deal with this heart issue first. I feel like the new practitioner got upset because the heart figure clinic decided to take me off of a medication and took it upon herself to decide that she was going to prescribe me this new medication that apparently treats heart failure and diabetes. We already had talked about this on Thursday, in which case I said, you know, let's wait another three months because that's the guidelines for checking A1C. You're not supposed to check it more frequently than three months because, you know, it's like a marker. And I said, let's wait for three months and you know then we'll decide if that's something that i want to do because i really would like to um you know at this point i'm still considered pre-diabetic so i really i mean the reality is you know since i want to say august when i got really sick with that pneumonia i, I put on like 30 pounds like it's it's been crazy so um some of that might be water weight and I'm on diuretics now. I have lost some weight since before I went in the hospital. You know, I just stopped drinking Coke for the most part. I've had like one uh, this past week, just a, a kid's size Coke. Like I was drinking like maybe two a day. So I'm doing really well with that. And that in itself can help you drop weight and become more healthy, obviously lower your blood sugar. But you know, I was just, I'm gonna be honest. I was pretty pissed off that they decided to check that without even saying anything to me. I feel like that's something they should talk to you about. And for that reason, I'll no longer be doing blood draws at the doctor's office. I'm gonna be going to the blood lab because then at least I can look at the blood uh, lab order and see what they're ordering. Like there's not gonna be any more like, oh, gotcha. Like there's not gonna be any more of that. I think overall she's a good practitioner, but I feel like she has a little bit of a power trip situation going on and I don't like it because you know, you're messing with my health. Like don't let your power ego get in the way of treating your patient the way they should be treated. So this new medication, like she was nice enough to give me samples, but listen, I was reading some of the side effects and I know you, I know a lot of the side effects are like, you know, not usual, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, y'all hear all the kind of bull crap that they say every single time you see a medication advertised on TV. 
uh, they are real quick to read the side effects. And then of course it and may also include death. You know, it's just like they read it so quickly. Apparently in rare instances with this one, no joke guys, you can get gangrene of your butthole. Okay, I'm not even kidding you. Your butthole can fall off, okay? No joke. Like, I know I'm one for the jokes. This is not a joke. This is for real. Like, my question is, how do they even know? Like, did somebody's butthole fall off when they were doing the clinical trials of this drug? Because if so, I kind of want to talk to that person. If your butthole fell off during this clinical trial, you know what medication I'm talking about. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get sued. But um, yeah, let's talk because I want to know how that even happens. Like, did you just go to the bathroom and wipe and there it is? Like, I don't know. Like, call me crazy, but like, what? So I don't know. Like, how would you even know your butthole has gangrene in it? I'm, I probably said butthole 10 times, but like that just tripped me out. And I'm like, you know what? I have a cardiologist appointment next week. So I'm going to talk to the cardiologist about this medication. I feel like I'm getting forced into it and I don't like to feel that way. So you guys let me know what you would do. You know, I mean, they seem to think that my blood pressure is under control. They seem to think that my heart is stronger than it was. So, you know, I'm like, let's, to me, I'm going to just tell y'all, let's wait until we go to the cardiologist, get another echocardiogram, see how my heart is performing, where my ejection fraction is, where it was at 15%. I don't know where it's at now. I don't feel like it's at, you know, 100% is actually 55%. I don't feel like it's anywhere near that, but I would say it's, ah, this is just a guess. I could be way off. I'm hoping it's probably some somewhere between 30 and 40 at this point. I hope. I don't know. I'm still very tired, still very weak. Like I was literally sitting here at my desk getting ready to do this video and falling asleep. So everybody that I'm talking to and seeing, like, you know, my mom, whatever, um, my family members, they're saying that I look stronger, I look healthier, and I feel a little bit better every day, which is, you know, that's positive and that's wonderful, but I'm very frustrated because I'm not where I want to be. And I know that's, you know, that's just how I live. You guys know, I don't like to sit still. I'd like to be out there adventuring, but I know in order for me to keep adventuring, I'm going to have to take care of myself at this point. Now on that note though, um, Friday and Saturday, we have some really awesome things that we're going to be doing. And I know I've been saying we're going to do a live stream we are planning to do a live stream either Friday or Saturday night. I'm thinking Friday night. Probably Friday night we'll do it. And it's going to be from a really awesome location. So uh, I'm going to try to do it sometime between 8 and 9 like we usually do. And I hope you guys can tune in. It's going to be so much fun. Promise it won't be a bummer like this. Matter of fact, um, if I talk anything about my heart health, it's going to just be minimal like how I feel that day. Uh, it's not going to be like this. It won't be like a medical update. It'll just be like, this is how I'm feeling. So I'm hoping I'm going to feel great. And I'm so excited about this. I think this is going to be so good for me mentally and physically because, you know, I'm getting out. I don't know what the weather, the weather is kind of saying cloudy, but it's not saying rain. So I'm cool with that. Whatever. You guys will probably be seeing me in a scooter at some point on these videos that we're doing, doing this weekend because uh, really... I have to at this point. I can't walk as much as I'm going to be moving around those two days. So I'm going to have to definitely have a scooter, which is cool. I'm fine with that. But I'm going to be getting up walking some. I'm going to definitely be doing some walking. I I'm just so excited because my mom's going to be there and I do have confirmation Lisa's going. So I'm so excited about that. She wasn't sure, but now I know she's going. Um, so it's going to be great. And I'm really looking forward to it. So guys... I don't know. Please continue to keep me in your prayers. I feel like the prayers are really, really making a difference. I know God's got me through all this and I do get down sometimes, but you know, I have to remember at the end of the day, like I'm so thankful that they caught this and I'm just, I'm so thankful for my family and for my friends, you know, like everybody in my life that's been there for me. Like you guys just don't even realize how important it is to have just you know, close 
people in your life that love you and are there for you when you're at your lowest. And I would say this is at my lowest. This past couple weeks have been me at my lowest. So I'm just really thankful to be, you know, hopefully on the up and up. Like I said, I don't know the numbers yet, but I can say I feel definitely stronger than I have been. So that's something and I'm good with that. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. And again, please keep an eye out for the live stream uh, this Friday sometime between eight and nine. Love you guys so much. See you soon. Bye-bye.